Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yemini, and each week we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of our homeland, Eretz Yisrael, may Kaddish Baruch Hu, may God protect our brave soldiers, and may God return all the hostages from Gaza immediately. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of Edward ben Ephraim, Shlomo ben Edward, and Yerachmiel ben Neil ben Gedalia. May their souls be uplifted and may their memories be a blessing. This week's Torah portion is Parshas Shoftim, Justice Shapes Society. Our Torah portion continues Moshe's final address to the Jewish nation. He outlines the leadership structure for the Jewish nation, and we begin with the commandment of appointing judges and law officers to maintain peace and order in each city. Moshe then details specific laws for judges, prohibiting corruption and the perversion of justice, as he states, Tzedek, Tzedek, Terdof, you shall surely pursue justice. Moshe continues and gives over many regulations for Melachim, for kings, such as not having many wives or acquiring excessive amounts of wealth. He relates why Kohanim will not inherit any portions in the land of Israel, for God is their inheritance. And although they were scheduled by family to work in the Mishkan, to work in the Beis Mikdash, and in the Temple, and in the Tabernacle, a Kohen always has the right to offer his own sacrifices personally. Moshe then expounds on the prohibition of engaging in witchcraft. He offers guidance on discerning between genuine and false prophets, along with the penalties for falsely claiming divine communication. However, a question comes to mind. Moshe begins our parsha with the mitzvah, with the commandment of establishing a justice system. And specifically, this should be done in every single city, as the Pasuk states, titin lecha Judges and police officers shall be placed at all your city gates. But does Moshe Rabbeinu truly mean that there should be judges and police officers physically at the city gates? Why does he detail a specific location where the judges, where the police officers should be located? The Ibn Ezra, Rav Avram Bameyur Ibn Ezra, gives a simple explanation. He writes that Yoshefet, a king from Shevet Yehuda, set up a judiciary system with judges and police officers at the city gates. His father, King Asa, initiated the process, but Yoshefet is credited with actually putting it into place. According to the Ibn Ezra, Moshe's intention was for judges and police officers to be situated around the city gates, just as Yoshefet did and positioned the judges at the entrance of each city to be accessible to all. Whether they lived in the town or were just visiting, they could seek justice without too much difficulty. However, the Arach HaMakadosh, Chaim ben Attar, a Moroccan commentary and Kabbalist, gives a deeper and more profound explanation. He notes that last week's Torah portion concluded with Moshe reiterating the mitzvah of visiting Yerushalayim or seeing the temple for the three major holidays, Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot. The Arach explains that a person may want to wait until they go up to Yerushalayim to deal with their legal issues. They would prefer to go before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish Supreme Court, to adjudicate their cases. But this would lead to justice being delayed as court cases would be postponed to the holidays. In the meantime, unresolved disputes could linger, creating tension and division within the community. The Yara Chaim explains that the mitzvah, Moshe Rabbeinu's intention, was to establish a judiciary system that applies to every city, not just in Yerushalayim and not just the Supreme Court, the Sanhedrin. Moshe wanted justice to be accessible so legal matters can be resolved quickly without waiting for the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem. Each city needs its own judges and law enforcement to maintain order and address issues locally preventing altercations from taking place. Moshe is telling the Jewish people that morality, that justice, that integrity are the bedrock of a society. Causing delays in adjudicating cases will lead to conflict, potentially fractioning an entire community. By instituting a local justice system, Mishra Binu ensured that justice would be a part of their daily lives, not something to be addressed only at specific times. This profound lesson from the Aracham HaKadosh, of justice, of morality being the bedrock of every community, is ever more relevant as we enter Elul, a month set for preparation for Rosh Hashanah and the New Year. Hasidus states that God, the King of all kings is uniquely accessible during Elul as we ready ourselves for the High Holiday. The Rabbeim, the Rebbes, quote a mushal, a metaphor, a king coming to the field to greet his subjects. 
the mushal, the metaphor, paints a picture that a king is usually secluded in his palace, surrounded by his guards within his regal chambers, limiting his accessibility to his people, to his citizens. But this month, the month of Elul, the king leaves his magnificent palace and goes to the field to see his people, to see his subjects. The entourage, the formidable walls, the grand throne room, the royal guards are all absent. Only the king and his nation. The idea behind this mushal, the idea behind this metaphor is that during Elul, God's divine presence is more accessible and approachable. Just as justice should not be exclusive to a specific place, but be present in every single city, our spirituality must be a part of our everyday lives, not reserved solely for special moments or holy places. In Elul, the king, the melech, as the metaphor goes, leaves his palace and enters the field. He's accessible to all wherever they are. And this teaches us that holiness is not limited to Yerushalayim, not limited to the Bismillah, to the temple, to the tabernacle. It is something that can be found and must be found in every home, in every city, in every moment of our lives. So in our daily life, we must understand that honesty, that integrity, that morality cannot be confined to just one aspect of who we are, to build a lasting legacy. We need to be true and authentic in everything we do, not what just is convenient, because we then turn our potential into our reality. I will conclude with a profound quote from Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs on the month of Elul. We need to come close to God for God to feel close to us. And this is what happens on Rosh Hashanah. It continues through the 10 days of repentance until Yom Kippur. But it begins in the month of Elul. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.